This is Mon Health Live, your source for the latest news, numbers, and vaccine information related to COVID-19. It's what you need to know now to make informed decisions for you and your family. Here are your hosts, Mon Health System CEO David Goldberg, Mon Health Chief Nurse Executive Dr. Crystal Atkinson, and WAJR's Kyle Wiggs. And good Saturday morning. Thank you for joining us again for Mon Health Live as we're tracking COVID-19 and what you need to know. Uh, we'll get you caught up with all of the information. We'll talk about uh, the vaccine. We'll talk about the doses. And we'll talk about this new UK strain, which has uh, been found. Uh, well, 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 we'll get into that. We'll save that for a little bit later. But uh, again, Dr. Adkinson is with us. David Goldberg is with us. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming on. Good morning, Kyle. And we have a special guest as well, Dr. Archna Vasdevan. She's a, Hi, um, hey, good morning. Thank you uh, for coming on. And Dr. V, an infectious disease expert. So again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, UK strain in a moment. Uh, yeah, I'm, da- I'm dating myself. You know, Dr. V is like Cher and Madonna. <laughs> by one name. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, uh, that's how we know her. And uh, of course, she's helped us get the information out here. Low this many months now that this pandemic uh, has kind of plagued the country. Well, David, let's start with you. Let Give us updates on uh, the COVID-19 situation, the latest since we've talked to you last. So as many people know, and we've talked about, our numbers of admissions for COVID have significantly dropped off. Today, we have one patient across Mon Health that has COVID. That doesn't mean that we're still not monitoring patients in and around the community, but the hospitalizations come down. I definitely think that's associated with people doing better with social distancing, wearing their masks, more people being vaccinated, getting their second shot. Um, I'm pleased to announce, and all of us heard, we hope the FDA uh, will continue to make an announcement to get the Johnson & Johnson single dose out sooner. I know Dr. V could talk much better about that. Um, We um, continue to see more people using our vaccination center. I think you dubbed it the super hub. Mm -hmm. We get more vaccines um, than we can uh, actually vaccinate more. My one request of the overall community listening, please register at vaccinate.wv.gov. And we as the healthcare providers will start working even more closely with the health department so we can identify our patients who meet the criteria and get them educated and prompt them to get their vaccines um, much more faster so we can vaccinate our way out of this. Mm-hmm. Dr. Atkinson, I know, just for a lack of a better term, I'm going to call it a formula, but it seems that there's a, a formula in place in terms of the people who are getting vaccinated that has led to a significant decrease in hospitalizations and, thank goodness, a decrease in deaths. And it's that older population that's been targeted, it seems like, uh, many people have been vaccinated in that age group, and it's brought the hospitalization number down. Absolutely, Kyle. And as we continue to look at that, and as David shared, you know, across our system, just seeing one person hospitalized, we are certainly very hopeful that that will be a trend that will continue to go down. And as we look at that, we've looked at, you know, processes because we want to make um, – all our processes for our patients and families as easy as possible. So with that, we have made some changes to our visitation that we have reopened our visitation back to eight from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., understanding that we have family members that when their loved ones are hospitalized, they may not be able to um, get to the hospital during the times that we had. So as we continue to see the trends, we're certainly um, going to be looking internally, not just here, but across our system, to make sure that we can be as flexible to the community as possible. Mm-hmm. So, again, we've made those changes um, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. Dr. V, take a moment and talk a little bit about the different vaccines. And some people may be confused about this. We've had the Moderna and we've had the Pfizer vaccine exclusively in West Virginia so far. But David mentioned the possibility of this Johnson and Johnson vaccine coming online and becoming available. Is there a difference? What is the difference between these three vaccines? Uh, Thank you for that question, uh, Kyle. I'm so glad you asked me that. Uh, That's something I've been meaning to talk about today. Uh, 
the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, uh, the FDA must have uh, convened on Friday, and uh, we'll know this weekend about an emergency use approval. Um, with the three vaccines, the Moderna and the Pfizer, they both are two-dose vaccines, meaning they reach their optimal efficacy once people have received both the shots. With Johnson and Johnson, currently it's a single dose vaccine. There are differences in the, in uh, many ways, so it's not fair to compare the three of them together. Uh, for one thing, storage uh, is different. With the uh, Pfizer requiring much higher uh, cold temperatures uh, in comparison to both the Moderna and Johnson and Johnson. Other than that, uh, age groups and where it's been tested uh, with uh, Johnson & Johnson, it was actually tested, large population came from South Africa where the current strains, uh, the variant strains are going on. And I'll touch about that in a little bit as well. Uh, Moderna and Pfizer was uh, tested in other populations where the strains were not as predominant. As far as efficacy is concerned, Moderna has an efficacy of 94.1% uh, in preventing COVID. Uh, Pfizer has been touted as having a 95% efficacy. Now, the one thing that's going to be confusing when Johnson & Johnson starts getting approved and uh, is going to come out is that its efficacy is termed 74% or 82%. And I would recommend not comparing these two vaccines, Moderna and Pfizer, with Johnson & Johnson. It would be like comparing apples and oranges, mainly because of how the vaccine is administered dosage-wise. The testing populations were different, and the things they looked for when they defined their efficacy was different. Um, the Johnson & Johnson, uh, they are looking to prevent serious COVID and hospitalizations, which is also really, really important in our fight against COVID. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as David said, step one is to get registered, uh, vaccinate.wv.gov. So you, you need to get registered first, and then the second step is to get the vaccine itself. And again, so far, what we've known in this area, the Moderna and the Pfizer, so those are two, that's a two-step process. And I know I've asked this question before, but this is for any of you. Is there any concern about those who get that first dose of the vaccine not being able to get the second dose? No. Uh, and we've actually, are you talking from a healthcare perspective? We do get ample supply and schedule accordingly to give people their boosters. Whether they have Moderna, they get the Moderna booster. If they have Pfizer, they get the Pfizer booster. And we've not had any issue with supply, and we prioritize those people first before giving new vaccines um, in the in the process of vaccinating. Okay, so that's good to know. That's good to know. Once you get that first dose, you're guaranteed to get the second dose in the time frame yeah. that's been established. So, so let's talk about the time frame, and Dr. Okay. D will always keep me honest. Early on, the medical direction was within 21 to 28 days, you get your second shot. Then the CDC came out after more people got it, they had more time to study, that they said, we can go a little further out if we need to, that you still get your maximum effectiveness of the vaccine. That could be anywhere from, I think it's day 40 to 48, but Dr. V will correct it, after the first shot and still get the maximum benefit of being vaccinated. So for those listening, if it goes past day 21 or 28, you're still okay. We will get to you. We will make sure you're vaccinated and you still will have full vaccine strength. Mm -hmm. And an issue with the doses, obviously, there's, you know, this is there's a, a, a huge uh, infrastructure that needs to be in place to get people vaccinated. It seems like here in Montegalia County, we've overcome that hurdle. The next hurdle is the number of doses. And uh, is, is there any indication that that number is going to increase? I guess it will with the with the Johnson & Johnson yeah. vaccine, right? I, I actually was on a phone call yesterday. I'm on a statewide call every Friday. And I can tell you that this month we are, I'm sorry, this coming week, first week of March, we're expecting more than 60,000 uh, vaccines to be here in West Virginia. That's predicated, we hope, as we build up to Johnson & Johnson. Um, but what we're starting to see is some of the rural communities in and around the state aren't getting as access to the vaccines to vaccinate their people as fast as we've done in our county. I don't want anyone to think that Monongalia is going to be second class or get less than anybody else, but we do have to vaccinate our way out of it and get to the more rural areas uh, for those fragile people in nursing homes, 
people in their 80s, their 70s, above age 65. We need to distribute that accordingly, but we will not risk anyone locally for not getting vaccinated timely either. Right. Dr. V, anything to add there? Uh, No, I completely agree with uh, what David has been saying. And uh, with uh, Johnson & Johnson, uh, I suspect uh, to answer your question, they are doing studies about doing a second booster shot. So that data will come out soon as well. Okay. And Dr. Adkinson, I believe you had something there. Yeah. So, Kyle, I just want to add to that, that from the standpoint of making sure that people get that second dose timely, when you are at the center to receive the first dose, it's really important to take a few minutes and register then. You usually have like a 15-minute window where you need to wait just to make sure that you're not having a reaction. So that's a perfect time to be able to register so you can already get scheduled for the second dose. Okay, so when you walk out of the building after getting your first dose, you should have an appointment for your second dose. Very very much so, and and hold on to your VAMS card. (laughs) Your VAMS card, all right, very good. Uh, We need to take a break. This is Mon Health Live. We are joined by David Goldberg, President. Chief Executive Officer of the Mon Health Systems, also Dr. Crystal Atkinson, Chief Nursing Executive of Mon Health Systems, and uh, Dr. Archana Vasudevan. She is an infectious disease expert, and we'll get into this UK strain when we return. Stay with us. Mon Health Live continues on WAJR after this. WAJR after. COVID-19 with the Mon Health experts. This is Mon Health Live. Here's Mon Health CEO David Goldberg and Chief Nurse Executive Dr. Crystal Atkinson. David, Dr. Atkinson with us on this Saturday morning. Mon Health Live. Also, infectious disease expert Dr. Archana Vasudevan. Dr. V, as we like to call her. And uh, Dr. V, let's get into this UK strain It's been found in our area, I assume, and and in neighboring states as well. What can you tell us about the progression of this? So uh, there are three different strains right now that uh, the CDC is uh, worrying about, and so should we. Uh, But the most common uh, variant that's being reported in other countries besides UK is the B11 strain. Uh, now, uh, it's been detected in more than 45 uh, jurisdictions within the United States, and uh, the CDC is reporting 2,100 cases within the U.S. and uh, all the surrounding states around West Virginia, and uh, uh, we have uh, three positive cases detected in Morgan down this past week. Oh. Now, this strain originated in the uh, U.K., and uh, it's been spread to other parts of the world, uh, and that's being attributed to its uh, very high uh, rates of transmissibility. There's some data also coming out from UK. They said that uh, uh, it may be uh, having a higher risk of death. They are still studying it. And uh, that is one variant that uh, we are worried about right now. The one good thing is both the Pfizer and Moderna have shown efficacy against the strain. So that's good. The other strain that's spreading around U.S. is the South Africa strain, uh, B1351. And with that one, the concern is the Moderna vaccine is not as effective. Uh, It's still preventing uh, the infection, but uh, it was uh, deemed slightly less effective in comparison to other strains. So that's just something to think about. Mm-hmm. Okay, so is there is there a legitimate serious concern about this? How concerned should people be about this? Uh, with the with the within U.S., uh, the other predominant strain uh, that we've had so far in this past year is uh, going to uh, respond very well to the vaccine, hopefully, uh, and uh, with the U.K. vaccine also, uh, it's going to respond as well. The question is with the high speed of transmission, how well are we going to control it? I would recommend we continue the same practices we have learned this past year. Uh, That's why masking is extremely important. Continue washing your hands. Let's keep our patients out of the hospitals. Let's try to prevent more severe presentation of COVID. Uh, Get your vaccinations as soon as you have the opportunity, as soon as you get a date, uh, get your vaccination, get your follow-up shot as well, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so hopefully we can avoid a spike due to these new strains if we continue on doing what we've been doing. Like you say, mask up, uh, social distance, keep your hands clean, and obviously get the vaccine. That's right. 
Okay, let's talk more about the vaccine. And, and David, Dr. Atkinson, you can jump in here as well. If you have tested positive at any point during this pandemic, you're you're recommended to still get that vaccine. That's crucial, right? That's that correct. is correct. Go ahead, Crystal. No, no, no. You're, go ahead, Dr. V. So, yeah, uh, there is still some question about how long these protective antibodies stay in our body after ha- after recovering from an infection. Um, not all of us are same, and uh, these protective antibodies are going to be produced in different quantities in different people. How effective they are at preventing repeat infection is also different in each of us. So that's why it's really important to get the vaccination, even if you have had uh, COVID in the past. Uh, the thing to remember is as soon as your symptoms have improved, as soon as you're recovered, uh, you can get the vaccine anytime. Um, talk to your primary care providers. We have a lot of excellent providers at MON. Talk to your provider and see when you qualify for one and get it as soon as you're offered a vaccine. Okay, Dr. Atkinson? Yeah, I, you know, I think that, that as we continue to look at this, let's compare it to the flu, right? Every year, you know, you could have had the flu last year, but we offer the flu vaccine every year. So let's start to think about this from the standpoint that, you know, if you've had something, we want to make sure that you are definitely at a place where we can try to prevent you from getting severe illness, and that's what the vaccine's doing. Okay. Dr. V, what about herd immunity? How would First of all, how would you define that? And secondly, is is it possible here this spring as more and more people continue to get vaccinated? So herd immunity, the concept means when a large part of a population is immune to a disease, uh, and uh, if enough people are immune to it, they can prevent the transmission of bacteria or virus back and forth between the people and thereby uh, controlling it in the population. With the COVID here, uh, we have good vaccines right now, thankfully, so fast, within one year. That's incredible. So with that, um, our definition of herd immunity was different six months ago when we thought one vaccine would be the solution. But with these uh, variations, with these uh, mutants, uh, I suspect, just like uh, uh, Crystal was mentioning right now, uh, this is going to become more like a flu situation where we'll have to tweak our vaccines annually um, and uh, getting everyone vaccinated in time would keep majority of uh, hospitalizations down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but the the possibility, first of all, the, the most important thing is to get everybody vaccinated now, but the possibility exists to where like the flu vaccine, we we all may be subjected to getting booster shots in upcoming years. I suspect it may be something like that. It's too soon to say, but with viruses, mutations happen all the time. The more it circulates with people, the more mutations are going to come up. And uh, with COVID, that has been what we are seeing. Um, I, I, I think... Down the road, we may see something like where uh, all of us are supposed to get a booster annually with our flu shots. Mm -hmm. Okay. David, uh, the hospital, obviously all workers have been vaccinated at this point. Is that correct? All of our um, staff on the front line have been offered a vaccine. About 65% across MON have elected to vaccinate. We are not mandating the vaccine. But those in the ER, the ICUs, the frontline staff, our environmental service workers are fully vaccinated. And we're seeing as today, we have literally one staff member with COVID across our four hospitals and all of our clinics. So it is working. Okay. Well, that's anecdotal proof. It's very solid. It's anecdotal, but it's very solid proof that the vaccine works because, as you say, most of the staff is vaccinated and the cases are almost completely gone. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Atkinson, anything to add there? No, just from the standpoint that we're continuing to make sure that we're doing all of our protective mechanisms to just to continue to be cautious, such as screening. Our hospitals are extremely clean, so there's no worry as far as that's concerned. Yeah, and if I may jump in, Kyle, you may not have seen it yet, but Crystal and the, the team have just decided to reduce some of the burdens and limitations on visitation. Um, We still screen all of our employees. We still screen all of our visitors into all of our sites. Uh, We still make sure everyone is masked. We still want the consistent visitor um, or or patient care advocate with our patients. 
but we've extended some of the hours to allow people to have a little bit more time with their loved ones. We'll watch that. Um, we understand it's been difficult during COVID, uh, but we don't want to spread anything either to staff and or to patients or to their families. But we're also seeing it come down, um, and we want to be able to be adjust accordingly, gingerly, and monitor it associated with any kind of impact from not only flu season, if that turns up, but also COVID. Right. All right. Well, we've got about uh, two minutes left. And Dr. V, anything uh, that you need to add that we haven't covered yet? I'd like to talk briefly about uh, monoclonal antibodies. Sure. Uh, these are proteins that develop uh, that are developed in a lab, uh, similar to the proteins you get in your body after a COVID infection. These are protective proteins, and they've shown to decrease hospital rates and decrease severe uh, COVID. Um, FDA has approved it two different kinds, one of which uh, uh, we give at Mon Health. Please talk to your providers as soon as you have a diagnosis of COVID to see if you qualify to receive it. Um, from 10 days from onset of your symptoms, it is recommended that you get this medication within that window period. And that's why it's really crucial that you talk to your providers about this. It's called monoclonal antibodies. Uh, and talk to your doctors and see if you qualify for this. And you've had success with that treatment? Yes, anecdotal, but very obvious success. None of the patients we've uh, trans- uh, given this IV medication so far have required hospitalization. All right, very good. Well, we're down to the final 30 seconds, and uh, everyone, great information today. We certainly appreciate it, and we hope uh, uh, the community is listening. And we certainly hope that uh, everybody takes advantage of this vaccine. The first step, obviously, is to get registered. If you haven't registered by now, it is vaccinatewv.gov. Vaccinate.wv.gov. I think I got that right. hope I got that right. Perfect. Okay, very good. Guys, great show. Good information. We'll uh, talk to you again next week. Great to hear you. Dr. V's a rock star. (laughs) All right, that's Mon Health Live for the Saturday morning on WAJR. Morning on WAJR.